The last survivor. Vivify Studio Stories. Alex, we will be late for our flight. Please hurry it up. We are going to miss our flight. Coming, Olivia. We'll be there in just 10 seconds. Olivia staring at her wristwatch as it struck 12.45 a.m. Alex stumbling down the staircase with his luggage in his hands. Ready? Olivia questioned. Yes, exclaimed Alex. Both Olivia and Alex scampered into their car and drove towards the airport. Hurry it up Alex we will be late for the flight. Fine Olivia. The car is already driving at the speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Well it wouldn't have been such situation if you would have waken up earlier. Time management Alex. Yes. Yes. Olivia. Alex's car driving into the airport drive-in. Jumping out of the car. Alex and Olivia unpacked their luggage. Took a nearby luggage trolley and placed all of the luggage on it and pushed the trolley through the airport's entrance. It took effort from Alex to push the trolley as the luggage on the trolley was to loaded. As the couple passed the security check and entered the ticket counter the man on the reception took the couple's ticket and stamped their visa. Olivia and Alex waited in the waiting lounge for their luggage to get loaded. When the person at the counter called Olivia and Alex's name for them to get seated on the plane. The couple quickly stood up and hurried towards the plane. Within a second the couple boarded on the plane and fastened their seatbelts. Within in half an hour the couple found themselves staring out of the plane's window and staring the deep blue sky and wool-like clouds. The newlywed couple was excited for their first trip abroad. But neither both of them knew that their dream vacation trip will soon turn into a tragic catastrophe. 3 o minutes up in the sky defying gravity, the couple found themselves onto a plane whose one engine was on fire. The plane was filled with the shrieking and shrills of the people. Some were screaming on top of their voice for help and some could be heard praying, asking for forgiveness and repenting for their sins. Alex and Olivia clenched onto each other tightly, Olivia clenched Alex's arms and started crying and wailing and started repenting and praying out loud for her minor sins and asking God for his mercy and blessings. Tears were flowing down the newlywed couple's eyes. Their first trip together after their wedding was turning into a disaster, which they could not have thought of in their wildest imagination. Both of them were shaking and trembling in fear. Oxygen masks were, were popping out of the cabinet on top of their heads. They could hear the pilot calling and screaming, Mayday, Mayday. The engine is on fire, the plane is out of control. Can you hear us captain, can you hear us it's a mayday, mayday call. We need to crash land captain. The pilot kept on yelling on top of his voice. The plane was filled with the shrieking screams and yelling of the passengers on board. The plane was swaying vigorously in mid-air. The pilot had lost all the control over the machine. Some of the passengers seeing the situation started jumping out of the plane. Bewildered, of the situation Alex's mind was boggling with thoughts and his life flashed before his eyes. He could feel Olivia's grip getting tighter onto his upper arms. Alex's mind went totally blank at the crucial situation. He was praying for his survival from the gliding plane crash. He was shocked and dumbfounded by the prevailing condition in the plane. He could think of just jumping to the plane in order to survive. Which he did to in order to save himself from his approaching death. Alex grabbed Olivia from her wrist and without giving a second thought he jumped to the speedy gliding plane, taking Olivia along too. Olivia and Alex found themselves flattering and swirling rapidly in mid-air. The cold sharp breeze slapped across their faces. Olivia and Alex were yelling on top of their voice, but their voice faded in the thick clouds. Alex could hear the crashing and exploding of the plane as the plane crashed into the thick dense forest. Scared Alex's body was trembling jerking. His eye had lost the vision of his wife. He could only hear Olivia's faded screams which muted after a while. Alex's body splashed across the cold violet waves of the ocean. Alex had always been a great swimmer. Alex's body floated on the shore of the waterbed. Olivia. Alex shouted on top of his voice, but alas his shouts went unanswered. The waves of the ocean were ragging and it was hard for Alex to swim against the ragging and splashing waves of the ocean. Alex's body floated helplessly in the ragging waves. Alex could see his death right before his eyes, he had lost all his hope. Alex's body hit hard onto a thick tree trunk that was hanging out from the right side of the ocean. Alex quickly clenched the bark that was protruding out of the rocky mountain. He climbed up the huge tree trunk. Half fainted, Alex was weak and cold his body lay motionless onto the bark. Shivering and jerking he see. He clenched hard to the thick tree trunk. Olivia. Alex shouted but again his calls went unanswered. Alex knew at the back of his mind that he had lost Olivia to the rapid flowing river. Alex wailed to his loss. But his weak and feeble body couldn't stand the cold windy storm. Within some seconds Alex fainted and his unconscious body laid exposed in the dark windy cold night. The warm rays of the sun woke Alex up. For the first time after the wreck Alex felt good and warm as rays of morning sun shone directly onto his body. He gained energy through the sun rays. The thrashing of the river waves echoed in the isolated valley where Alex found himself all alone. Not knowing where he was. He gained some energy to climb up the huge rock. His body was still weak but he dragged his feet along the narrow walking path in the mountainous region. Alex called out for help. But his voice just echoed through the valley and went unheard. Without any another option Alex walked along the muddy walking track. The track was the only source of hope Alex had that kept his moral high that human life does exist in the isolated and barren valley. 
Small footprints of wolves were spotted along the track. Alex for a second was scared seeing the tracks as he had to be careful not to be eaten by wild boars and wolves. The wild monkeys sat along the muddy track. The pine tree tops were occupied by the stray monkeys. It was morning and Alex knew he only had morning daylight in which he could find for himself shelter and food for the day. If the night approached so will the wild beasts will, making it tough for Alex to survive in the wilderness of the dark dense forest. Alex's stomach was grumbling as he had been starving for the last 48 hours. As he was crossing the dark thick forest Alex came across a wild berry tree. Alex was jubilant to see the tree and the wild berries growing on it. He ran as fast as he could and grabbed the berries off the tree and started devouring them. The berries provided Alex with the energy for him to survive the day. He filled his pockets with the berries and tied some in his shirt knot for the journey ahead. Alex now had to look for a shelter for the day and that to before the night darkness approaches. So tired of continuous walking that Alex's legs and feet started hurting and throbbing with pain. Alex found himself a resting place under a huge tree. The earth was damp and cold and muddy, but still so tired of endless walk that Alex took a refuge under the dense tree. Rubbing and messaging his bony feet, his shoes were wet and torn due to rugged terrain. Alex placed the shoes under the warm shining rays of sun. While his shoes were drying in the sun, Alex took a short nap. Fifteen minutes through his nap, Alex's eyes opened due to the snarling sound. As Alex opened his eyes, he found himself facing three four stray dogs. Who were slowly surrounding and circling Alex who lied under the tree. Alex could hear the growling and snarling of the attacking dogs. Alex yelped and screamed in confusion. Seeing Alex yelling the wild dogs started barking. Alex could see the dogs canine teeth and their saliva coming out of their mouths. Alex clenched a nearby rock that laid on the muddy floor and threw it towards the wild dogs pack. This act more aggravated the raging dogs pack. The dogs started charging towards Alex. Help! shouted Alex on top of his voice. But Alex's screams were covered by the furious raging dogs' hounds and growls. The stray dogs in the pack started pounding onto Alex. Seeing the situation Alex started throwing rocks and stones that he could get his hands on towards the hounds. In the vicious attacks, Alex's clothing got torn and in the claws of the wild hounds scratched into Alex's legs flesh. Alex yelled in pain, wailing and crying. The hounds jumped in order to drag Alex down the tree. The hounds licked Alex's blood that fell on the ground. But, Alex managed to climb onto the tree. Alex clenched the tree bark tightly, to save himself from his raging death. Alex started breathing heavily and vigorously but he felt secure up in the tree as the hounds could not approach him. Alex stayed up in tree until he could hear the growls of the hounds fading away slowly. Alex looked down towards the ground and he could see the hounds disappearing in the forest. Alex decided to stay up in the tree for an hour or so. His wound leg was bleeding heavily but in the loss of blood made Alex more weak and feeble. He took a torn of sleeves from his arms and tied it onto the wound to stop the flow of blood. Gently and carefully making sure the hounds were not nearby, Alex attempted to climb down the tree. As he climbed down and hit the ground he walked and stumbled towards the nearby waterfall, where he dipped his feet into the cold running water and took off the cloth bandage, he washed his wound carefully with the clean running water of the waterfall and washed his bandage. Luckily he found a aloevera plant nearby he took the gel and rubbed it onto the wound and tied the bandage over the leg. Alex took a quick bath in the pond and got dressed again. Alex felt hungry so he devoured on the left acai berries in his pocket. Don, approached and Alex still hadn't found himself a resting place where he could spend his night. He took up his courage and strength and walked few miles in search of a place where he could spend the coming night. To his amazement he found a huge ruin of an ancient temple. Alex in joy, Alex had found his resting place for the night. He ran towards the ruin entrance. The temple warm and was perfect place for Alex to rest. Even though he could smell the stink of the vampire bat's feces. But still Alex found it to be a good resting place. The temple was huge and had plenty of rooms, the worshipping area had a huge idol placed in it. But over time the idol had turned into a wreck. Majority of the rooms were occupied by the monkey and wild chimpanzees. Alex was tired, he placed huge bananas leaves onto the ground and dozed up to sleep. Alex not in his wildest imagination knew that he would come across this life-turning adventure. But he was surviving that was a miracle in itself. All the luxuries of life that Alex faced in his hometown had vanished in mid-seconds. He was cold, out of bamboo twigs and bananas leaves. Wild aloe vera growing on the island provided good source of antiseptic medicine. For his secretion he had built himself a dench in the island floor of stones and rocks and cemented it with mud available on the island. Months and weeks passed by but no existence of human race could be traced across the island. Time was flying and Alex could feel the time passing by. No source of entertainment, Alex started taming wild mongols and played fetch the stick with them taming them as dogs. That according to Alex was a good time pass. Taming the wild mongols and chasing them in the wild was totally a new experience for Alex away from the civil life into the wild was the idea he saw in movies but he never expected this to happen with him in real life. His life had taken a 360 degree rotation in a second. His mind boggled at this happening but he knew fate was predestinate he was helpless and crippled. 
Time was moving in a loop, each day he struggled to survive and every day he found himself alive. He wondered if he would ever see the city life again or will he be stuck in the deserted island forever. He found his future very weak and bleak. He felt entrapped and entangled in the life loop. Where was his future taking him? Why was he even alive till now was the question that haunted him. He felt as a discarded soul, the odd one out. All day he would listen to the waging waves of oceans or mongols or wild animals hounds. His staple food was crab, fish and wild fruits. In morning he would wander aimlessly on the island exploring the island and the valleys. And as night approached he would retrieve to the ruined temple. Apart from clothing and personal hygiene Alex had taken care of all of his life necessities. He took bath in the fresh waters of the spring nearby. Wore leaves and straw garments which he wove from his own hands to cover himself up. Days and nights passed by being stuck on the island. Alex thought of making a wooden raft which he had seen in the movies to escape the island. He collected all the bamboo branches that he could get his hands on he piled the branches and tied them in a raft form with the dried straws and grass. Will the raft that he was making will be able to survive the waves of the ocean? It was his only way out from the island. In four days the raft was built and Alex tested the raft against the ocean waves. Alex paddled his raft through the ocean waves. But the raft wasn't that strongly constructed to withstand the vivacious and raging waves. Few miles in the ocean the raft started wrecking apart. But Alex made it to the nearest lighthouse. He quickly climbed out off the raft and headed towards the lighthouse. It had been six months now till Alex had been lost in the crash incident. Alex looked over the ocean and could see some light flickering far away. He ran and climbed up the lighthouse. As he reached the top of the attic of the lighthouse he started shouting for rescue but his yelling faded in the sounds of the waves. He could see the ship fading out of his sight. He quickly switched on the light switch of the lighthouse. As he pushed the switch, the surge light of the lighthouse started flickering in the darkness of the smoggy evening. Alex waved and yelled for help and flickered the lighthouse light. But this time Alex's shouts were answered back. Anyone there? The captain of the ship shouted back. Alex flickered the lighthouse light and yelled on top of his voice for help and rescue. Yes. I need help sir. Okay said the captain of the ship. We will be right there. With that said the ship floated towards the direction where Alex stood. Alex in jubilance jumped in excitement. He had made it, he had escaped the isolated island. Alex had survived to see the life of the city again. Alex couldn't believe he had overcome such a huge obstacle in his life. His life was getting back to normal again. Alex survived the seven months of isolation and wilderness on the island. He climbed down the lighthouse and onto the ferry. Alex hugged the captain in excitement and happiness. Alex was returning back home but he had lost his newly wedded wife. Which was a loss he had to live with for all his life ahead. 